It's all started with the dream of an electric car. But I wanted a bit more than just to be able to own the thing. I wanted to understand its magic, to be able to dive deeper and get familiar how it all works and functions. And of course the source of all knowledge, the internet, well, ChatGPT was not available back then, presented me with this amazing open inverter community. My first project was Toyota Prius Inverter and Gearbox, chosen mainly because of its low price and simplicity, or so I thought at the time. Turned out I was completely wrong about simplicity, but the price was good and I spent countless hours on this and I learned a lot, but I got the electric motor working in the end. Next, I have graduated to the Tesla Model S front drive motor, again, using open inverter design. I can't say this was easier, but many concepts were already familiar and Tesla was conquered as well. The next sensible move towards my final goal, converted EV, would be to start working on a battery. But it would not be me if my attention was not diverted somewhere else. So I started working on my own design for the Tesla open inverter board while doubling with Zombieverter VCU. This video is about how I design the Tesla small drive unit board. Okay, let's see what did I manage to concoct, <coughs> create in the end. As I'm not a seasoned PCB designer, I used Damien Maguire design as a base. But I did mine in KiCad. This is my PCB design software of choice. I love KiCad, by the way. I use STM32 F103 processor capable of running open inverter code and implemented all standard processor bits, power supply with decoupling capacitors and filter for WDDA, crystal oscillator and etc. I deleted JTAG connector and implemented SWD TC2030 footprint for a quick programming. All other bits are pretty much the same as in open inverter Tesla board except I added on ESP32 module. This is for two reasons. First, I hated working with Olimax or even VMOS modules. And second, Johannes released a new web interface for the software for ESP32, which I was keen to explore. I decided against USB to serial converter and USB connector as I used the separate programming board from SparkFun for that. Just plug it in and program the thing, easy. Okay, now to the actual PCB design. This is where most of my work has gone in and I use four layers board with the first inner layer as a ground plane and the second inner layer as five volts power plane. Most of the routing has done either on top or bottom copper layers. While implementing some polygon pores for the power supply, the voltages on the top layer. It took me a while to finish that but I have to say I'm proud of my work, the board looks great. And of course it doesn't matter how pretty it looks, if it doesn't work it's no use for anyone or me for that matter. To manufacture the board I used JLC PCB and that's where my frustration started. They used their own parts inventory and some parts were not available. Also ESP room module was in stock but it could not be included under economic assembly which I was using. I decided against standard assembly as it was more expensive. And to make matters worse, I found that 3.16 kilo ohm resistor was substituted with one kilo ohm. I know that's my fault and I should have checked it, but I didn't. When I got to the point where I had to confirm component placement, I found that GLCPCB software seems to have problem with the way KiCad does rotation. And I have to say, I have been burned with this issue before. Some of the diets were placed wrong way around, which resulted in the board not working, and I had to rework some of the components. So at this point, I had enough. I decided to switch to the alternative supplier, PCBWay. You can imagine how pleased I was when PCBWay reached out and offered to sponsor some of my videos. What I find attractive in their services is that not only they provide excellent quality PCB services, but also multiple options for the assembly service. One of them is a turnkey assembly solution where PCBWay are supplying all the parts. The parts are sourced from major electronic suppliers such as DigiKey and Mauser, 
At the same time, they are offering alternative options for customer to supply all parts as well as the combo option where a customer can supply some of the parts. I am planning to use both PCB manufacture and PCB assembly in the future. As well as PCB assembly and manufacture, PCBWay offer 3D printing as well as CNC machining. 3D printing is something that particularly interests me and I'm planning to use this service from them as well. In the meantime, thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. After some wait, I received new boards. I can tell you nothing smells like freshly baked PCBs. I still need to solder some components, but learning from previous experience I've decided to do some basic tests first. I wanted to check if the board can be powered up and verify the supply voltages. I want to now try the first power up sequence which is really exciting but at the same time it's a bit worrying and I'll just clamp these to the 12 volts and ground and now let's try power it on. Ta-da! An LED comes on so you can see here and that means that power is working. So LED is connected to 3.3 volts and just to be sure I want to actually measure the key voltages. On this board the input voltage is 12 volts and we provide plus 5 and plus 3.3 to our PCB. I have done the measurements for those and all was good with an expected range and stable. Now we know that power works before I solve the missing bit. I want to check if the main part of the board is working. In other words, I want to program the STM32 processor. So I'm now connected the programmer. All I need to do is plug it into the laptop. As this was a first programming effort on a new board, I expected problems. But to my total amazement, the whole process went smoothly from doing bootloader and following up with the open inverter program. Everything worked. What a surprise. First power test and after that programming worked without a hitch. I have a good feeling about this. I need to ride this wave of success and finish this job by soldering ESP32 room module. I could have soldered ESP with just a soldering iron, but I wanted to try this new tool, hot air station I got from Amazon. I got a bit of flux and I started thinning the pads with some solder. Next I use a solder wick to remove excess solder before I can apply a solder paste. I think I put a bit too much paste, but nothing soldering iron can't fix. Should I have used one in the first place, right? Well, you never know. Slowly bring in the hot air to first warm up the area around my components, to go through the soak phase of the reflow profile, and then move closer and closer to let solder paste melt. Look at this big blob of solder. Oh, I definitely put too much solder paste on this. Now to finish off a bit more flux and remove the excess of solder with the soldering iron. Here we go, a bit more cleaning with the isopropanol using cloth and a brush and the job is done. Not too bad and not too shabby as they say. Now let's see if this actually works. To do that I will need to program ESP32 module. What we will require for that is a SparkFun FTDI board that converts USB to UART. This is basically to allow the flow of the data. The second requirement would be to pull I.O. pin low. To do that I will need to connect the pin I.O. to the ground. On the ESP module this will enable programming mode. When this is done I will use Microsoft Visual Studio Code and Platform I.O. to program. Now the connection is there, I loaded the code and entered programming mode. Let's go for it. And we have success. Programming is complete. Ok, let's go to Wi-Fi and see if this shows up in the list of available Wi-Fi modules. Connection is there. Let's connect. Connect. Connection successful. Now let's launch the web interface. And we're up and running. Success. Now I know both STM and ESP processes are working. I can complete the job by soldering FET transistors that operate contactors. After that I can swap the resistor that had a wrong nominal value and job will be done. I used the hot air to do the transistors while soldering iron was used to replace the resistor. Now my board is complete and I think it looks great. We reached the end of this video now. If you have gone this far you may want to watch this video over here 
where I have a detailed tutorial how I programmed ESP32 module. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next one.